going on, OS? We're back again with our Detroit Lions franchise, week 13 of the 2019 season, year four, the week before, the week, the year before we moved to Brooklyn to become the Beats. Let's look at what we have to scout this week. Rut row. So, you can see right here what we have watched so far. Taylor, Taylor Gilliam might be our move at middle line, even though we have a really good middle linebacker. Maybe convert to a 3-4. To a, uh, we also could go after Matt Bowen, a uh, top-end strong safety. We do need safety help. But then there's Lane Snell. Lane Snell is the live Twitch favorite in this draft. We must get him at some point. Uh, so, all of these guys look like pretty good so far, but let us draft. Let's see what we need before we scout. Just want to look at, look over what our, uh, who we're losing next year, give you guys a chance to catch up. Um, we will be losing DeAndre Levy, we will not be re-signing him, so that will be a, um, problem. Uh, so 2019, who is the 2020 here? We do have a quarterback. Farmington Pryor is probably going to be stepping up at some point. Um, he is starting the rest of the season. Jarrett McKinnon, we will have, so we're pretty good at running back here with Johnstone, McClellan, and McKinnon. We are going to need a fullback. Lane Snell fits that bill very well. Uh, Marvin Jones will be back, but it looks like next year is going to be the Kubik and Zombo show. Barring any craziness. Eric Ebron is back along with Daniel Wilcox. Jack Doyle is probably gone. Um, at, at 29, I like Jack Doyle's blocking, but unfortunately it's time to move on. Uh, Lockett was our draft pick last year. Franchise left tackle. We're not going to re-sign Taylor Decker. Uh, Swanson is back. Tomlinson is back. Tomlinson's the starter right now. I wouldn't mind getting rid of that $3.3 million and a early season cut for that salary cap could be in the works. Uh, Nate Friedman is going to be our starting center. We are going to need a backup. Glasgow is gone. Warford and Jameson, right guards both. Uh, Warford probably is going to be gone. $6.3 million doesn't work into our salary cap. And by that time, his, his penalty won't be as bad, so... Uh, let's see here. Upshaw is staying there. We already knew that. <coughs> Cleo Mack is back. He'll be 29. Devin Taylor is gone. Uh, I like Devin Taylor, but he's a straight pass rusher. Not going to be worth the money he's going to request. Uh, Z Ziggy Ansa and Donald are both coming back. I love Donald as a backup speed rusher. Ionitis and Aishon Robinson both going to be back. Sylvester will be back. Ty Walker is not going to be back. So we're going to have to find another backup defensive tackle. Kennard will be back. Kevin Van Noy will be back. Van Noy is good at backing up all three linebacker positions for us. Middle linebacker, Nate McAfee has been a monster for us in the middle. Uh, we'll continue that for at least two more years. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, Duckett and Burley back, both as backup positions. Uh, Lumpkin will be back. You see, DeAndre Levy is going to be the big loss here. Um, Lumpkin probably is not going to do a ton for us next year. We're going to look to possibly get Gilliam to take his place. Uh, but Williams also gone next year. He was kind of a stopgap for us. Darius Slay, our defensive backfield is, is intact. Uh, we have no problem with what's going on here. E uh, Israel McNary will be on the last year of his rookie deal. Condre Diggs will be back off a of, of re-sign. Marcus Williams will still be there from signing. Marcus Williams is the candidate for, for getting cut if we need some extra money. Uh, Darius Slay will absolutely be back. He is our number one. Uh, Byron Jones, we just signed him to a big deal this offseason. He will be in our free safety position. And no, you see this, no strong safeties. Uh... That's not a terrible thing because we are going to look to draft one at some point, but we should also look at negotiations here to bring back at least one strong safety. Uh, we're not going to go after DeAndre Levy. We're not going after uh, Taylor Decker. Tavon Wilson's a little old. We don't want to go after him. We're going to try to save money and go big this offseason. Antoine Williams is not interested, as we remember from last time. 
Graham Glasgow, oh man, I just don't like his run blocking, pass blocking anymore. Anything under 80, uh, just I can't go with that, guys. Uh, Tyron Walker, again, a little old for us. Miles Killebrew. Now, Miles Killebrew, I wouldn't mind. He likes the bonus and duration, just not the salary. I don't mind popping a little extra money for him at 26 because he's got high hit power. Can throw that in there as a backup or as a guy on special teams. Hit power big on the special teams. So, let's look at this. Uh, you count three strong safeties. All of them not. Or they're, oh, that's right. They're all back for 2019. I missed that. You're right. We're still going to go after another one. No, we don't have three strong safeties. They're all gone after this year. Right? Did I read that wrong? Was I looking at 2020? No, they're gone. We, we're, they're gone after this year. The 2019 is this year. 2020 is next year. So we just resigned uh, Miles Killebrew. But other than that, we are going to need strong safeties. Specific, ugh, specifically a starting one. A starting one to go next to Byron Jones. So let's scout here. All right, and look at the draft picks we have. We have two first rounders, two, uh, three third rounders, a couple of fours, and a couple of fives. We ha That's why we're not re-signing a lot of people. We have a lot of draft picks. Uh, so that's going to be big for us. Let us see what we have to work with here. We did look at a couple of quarterbacks. Nothing really went. Nothing really uh, blew up our skirt here. Although I do like a Navy quarterback. A Navy quarterback with an A minus throw power might be a project in the late rounds. Uh, fullback, we know we want Lane Snell. I, I know we want Lane Snell. We will get Lane Snell. Uh, we're gonna hold off on too much more. I do like the B plus catching on Darren Peterson. Um, I like the B-plus catch in traffic for a 6-1 guy. That's really interesting. A 6-5 guy. We're going to see what his combine comes out to be before we go after him. But again, wide receiver-wise, we've got three starting quality wide receivers right now. We don't know what we're going to do with that. Uh, why are you not working? Come on for me. Come on. Nice work, Carl. See? My fist. Oh, uh, I was gonna fest you. Stony469, welcome to the OS squad, and thank you for showing the love, because we love it when you show the love, as you're about to see from the chat, right over there, no, right over here, the chat over there is gonna show you, we love it when you show the love, chat, can I get some love for Stony469, please? Um, we are gonna go over the first bars here, uh, the first round of all these receivers, because there's just so many. I like this. This B-plus catching in the 7th round for a 6-6 six, six guy? Kid me? B-plus catching for a 5-10 route runner? I'm all in, guys. I'm all in on this. Jimmy Biscuits, what's going on, my dude? Working that Ramon love. I love that, dude. So a couple of really interesting wide receiver prospects. I don't think we have to go early for that. Uh, let's go into our scouting. Our scouted and make sure we don't have anything we can spend that 5 points on. I know we do. I know we have something we can spend that five points on. Hate to waste scouting points. Hate it. Hate it with a passion. There we go. A 3-4 tackler. There we go. Yeah, I do like the route runner guy. Um, we, we'll get back, we will get back to him. So let's move this to the next week. We're currently 4-7 and seven against the 3-8 and eight team redacted. So, and we lose again 4-8. and eight. That's actually not terrible. Uh, doctors have cleared Jarek McKinnon, but that's okay. Ali McClellan is still going to start. We want that Ali McClellan XP as we go. Uh, let's see if anyone else is ready to negotiate. Yep, no one else. We're good. There are no more negotiations we have to worry about. Oh, did the Netherlands come back? A eggs, nice. Um, Jimmy, I don't know that we're going to worry about getting higher. I like the amount of draft picks because we've got a lot of holes to fill. Um, oh yeah, you mean with the loss. Yeah, Jimmy, <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely a way to get it back up. You're absolutely right there, sir. I'll show you the standings here in a couple weeks. I don't, I don't want to show it to you yet. We'll show it as we go. Uh, let's see the news real quick. Uh, Doug on it. I normally play uh, four to five games a season unless we're getting blown out. Then I like to move on. 
Uh, so draft stories. Stanley Luke was the last one we're looking at. Ooh, a free safety that we might be able to move to a uh, strong safety. Like it. Let's see here. Free safety. And I like his name, Gabriel Hardesty. Now, what you guys don't under may not understand with what I'm doing here, I actually don't always like run support with my strong safety. I like to have two playmakers and run a lot of cover two. Uh, a little Tampa Bay two sometimes, sometimes just a hard cover two. So, single game INT record. Like it. Like it a lot, boys. <clears throat> yeah, I get the... I, I, we're calling for that blizzard here, too. Somewhere between, like, 12 and 24 inches. So... Uh, no idea whether to buy the Browns traded for the quarterback, because they want another quarterback. They're also, they're also talking about drafting a quarterback, so... Uh, Gabriel Hardesty, we already knew about him. A, a plus, or B plus hit power? I mean... I like the B minus zone coverage. How old is he? 23. We will also be looking at this too, guys. We're going to start looking at age a little closer. Uh, we've been drafting some 23 year olds that we don't get a lot of, a lot of go out of a lot of progression out of. So we're definitely going to start looking at the age more too. Uh, they're not going to mullet. They didn't say they were going to cut him. They actually said that if no one takes him in trade yes, late yesterday, they're going to hold on to him, draft somebody and have a competition. So, um, that was what they said. Now, this is the Browns. It, they could do anything at that point, so. B minus zone coverage. Don't mind it. The 5'10 worries me, and the fact that he's 23. Uh, see, all this is hit power. Oh, man, I don't really like any of that. Um, we could look around with some of these cornerbacks and go for like this guy like this guy could go back into a strong safety spot with a b zone coverage depending on again 23 5 10 not really my kind of guy uh we've, we have been looking very thoroughly at some linebackers i do like that b plus tackle this guy looks interesting this late mm, i don't know b plus tackle don't like what he uh, ends up being there, though. Look at this middle linebackers. Like I said, I think Gilliam is our move, but there are other options uh, sitting around. B-plus power move, maybe somebody to replace Devin Taylor. Uh, we were looking at 3-4 pass rushers to possibly get into that speed rusher spot on the outside. Not a starting guy. We're not looking for somebody to replace Khalil Mack uh, or Ziggy Ansa, but somebody to, to work their way up to that spot. So, Pwn Bird. Pwn Bird? I like Pwn Bird. I love that name. So, maybe that's our guy. We are going to look at the wet route runner, guys. We are going to look at the route runner. 24, though. Wow. He better come out really, really well. Um, so, let's, let's move past here. Next week, we're going up against the 7-5 Chiefs. Dude, I think Mike Glennon is your answer, Ordos. Uh, okay, we lose again. Again, not that big of a deal. Jarek McKinnon is back. Although, Jarek McKinnon might not... You know, I think I like Jarek McKinnon, but we're going to leave Allie McClellan there for it. <clears throat> All right, let's see any extra news. Zombo is not my route runner. Actually, Zombo might be the outside guy. So, we'll see that. Draft stories... Let's look at this. We have so much extra stuff going on here. Reed Grasso. I'm not sure what... Uh, I'm going to guess that's a halfback, maybe? School record for rushing touchdowns. How would you guys feel if... Uh, if Reed Grasso was the other fullback? And then AJ Novak is the... Looks like another good possibility. Hopefully he's a late rounder. I think he's probably one of those first round quarterbacks that we saw. Because uh, he's the Heisman winner. So Heisman winners normally don't fall that far. Uh, 
Grasso fullback confirmed. AJ Novak, okay, yeah, so he's top of the draft. Um, not saying we won't go after him, because while I like Farmington Pryor, not not necessary, not a necessary guy. Oh my god, Reed Grasso. Reed Grasso, guys! Reed Grasso's no Lane Snell, though. A mullet, it is online, but it is single player. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Reed Grasso getting some good, uh, good pub there on the, uh, on the news. I think this is the first time I've seen both fullbacks in the draft, both rounded fullbacks, get stories in the offseason. So, we're gonna get, but we're not getting both of them. Yeah, the lowest I've seen a Heisman fall first round. Yeah, that's about right. About right. Uh, let's go back. I want to look at... Uh, did we look at tackles yet? I know we have tackles, but I'm always looking for good defense... Or a good offensive lineman. <laughs> guys. Guys. Wrestling fans. I'm not sure, but this might be a pick. <laughs> we might have to go after him. Uh, let's keep moving on here, though. Uh, let's see here. We will kind of look at these guys. Now, I don't like these versatile guys. I like my defensive tackles to be about, uh, 300, a little over 300. So, I don't mind picking up three, four guys and moving them inside. But not for, not for your light like that. I don't want light guys. I want big guys to, to control the line of scrimmage. And my outside guys, I like to have, for the most part, I like to have big time. Like this guy, 310. This guy could be somebody we put in the middle. Like with a B tackle in the seventh round. I like this I like this Everett Marino too. Uh, B plus finesse moves could be something that actually works on the inside. So we see there isn't a lot of B, uh, D tackle help here. B, what is this block shed though, baby? Okay, okay. If this guy's 22, we could do that. We could work with that, guys. I should draft a quarterback with 98 speed. I'm not I'm not uh, sneaky, unfortunately. We don't get those lucky. Yeah, I like that Marino kid a lot. That right end. Everett Marino, like, I, I, I love the fact that he's got B-plus finesse moves. So, uh, let's get that extra five points out of there. So we can keep moving. Have anybody? Nobody? We got nobody we can get five points to? This is one of the downfalls of going after the first grade for a lot of these guys is that I get a lot of this, I need 10 points, there we go. A 3-4 pass rusher. Well, maybe Pone Bird isn't the move then. Um, Sneaky went pretty late, I don't know exactly what time it was, but Sneaky went pretty late. I can tell you I wasn't around for it. Alright, against the divisional rival Packers, who are sitting at 8-5. and five. And we beat the Packers, uh, but we do have a guy that regresses, I mean, I guess that's probably McClellan. Yeah, ooh, for fumbles. Come on, Ali. You're, that's the one thing you're not supposed to do. Be C plus pursuit. Kind of reminds you of the guy to Washington's fame for taking people out from behind. <laughs> All right, Nate Friedman is back. He is going to slot back into that center position very well. Uh, let's make sure of nice no more work. stories. Oh, I'm Oh, Mr. I was going to fist you. LTK 103, thanks for joining the OS squad. Thank you for showing the love to the channel. Love it when you show the love. So, can we get some love from the chat, please, for LTK? No, that's not too harsh, Mullet. I, I like it. I like if I, if I fumble twice, yeah, I should have some carry issues. I'm fine with them, Evil. Um, I think, I think uh, Rick Wagner is going to be good for them. He's a good right tackle. 
All right, same stories. We're good there. So let's get the scouting done. Start honing in on some of our guys, I think. I don't really see any quarterbacks I, I like. I mean, 6'6", 233. Not great. Um, let's start looking at some of the running backs just for late moves. Oh, excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. B plus juke move, A minus stiff arm for, wow, Quanta Contavious McDougal. We could get the Navy running back and the Navy quarterback and put them back together. Let's run the triple option. He could be the B back. Right, that doesn't bother me, Evil. One's a fullback and one's a right tackle that, you know, was going to leave. There's You're not going to pay a right tackle the kind of money he's looking for. Uh, it does have a progression system. But you get XP for that, mullet. That's what I'm saying. When you get big runs like that, you get big time XP for, for making goals. You don't get hit for not making goals. So this that's how it regresses. That's how, if you don't perform, you don't like... If you, like, miss goals, you don't get knocked for that, and I think you should. <coughs> I don't know what the hell's wrong with me today, guys. I am all over the place today. But I got nothing to spend points on, so. Uh, Juice is not that important to the scheme. He really isn't. They ran more and more uh, three three wide single back before. Or this year. Yes, Georgia Tech. That's because Georgia Tech uh, is Paul Johnson, who is the old, uh, who is the old um, Navy coach. That's why they brought that over there. Draft stories, same thing, which is pretty good because this is after. Stop winning! Don't tell me! Don't tell me! We're six and nine. <laughs> Let's look at real quick what's going on with the standings. That's the schedule. The standings would be one back there. There we go. No, no, don't do this. Gonna... Alright, so you see here the Jaguars are running rough shot. Uh let's see here. AFC North. Steelers, Browns still have a chance to get up there. Uh, so Browns and Steelers look like they're up there. Jaguars and Texans. Wow, the Jaguars 13 and 2, still just destroying people. 12 and 3, the Jets and the Patriots both at 8 and 7, fighting for their lives. Chiefs at 9 and 6, Raiders at 8 and 7. Broncos and Voyagers, that is a monster of a division right there, boys. Uh, NFC North, the Packers are up, the Vikings are 8 and 7. NFC South, the Saints have clinched, uh, and then the Falcons are at eight and seven. NFC East, the Eagles are at ten and five and clinched. The Giants at eight and seven. The NFC West, very close as well, nine and six, eight and seven for the Cards and the Seahawks. Um, you see this AFC, this AFC after the Texans, this is all bunched up with a ton of eight and seven teams. So this last week is going to mean a lot. Same thing with the NFC. A lot of eight and seven in there, boys. A lot of eight and seven. We'll look at the stats and all once we sim this next week. Uh, it's going to scout some more players. No, the one and only, a lot of people do that. A lot of people sim a lot and that's all they do. Get those f Frank Coon. Let's get these first rounders out of the way just in case. I don't think we're going to take a right tackle that early, but, you know. Cedric Emmons uh, actually had a story about him, so we're going to hold on to him. 5'10 worries me, but B-plus route running does not. I love that route running. But we also saw late here. I do want to look at that route runner. 
He's got a B-plus catch, a B-plus route run, and a B-plus release. That release is not that high unless he's got some strength, too. Barring if he's like 4, 5, 40, we're, we're, we worry about that. But other than that, that might not be a terrible pick there, guys. And this red zone threat. I mean, come on. Really? How much do I think Frostbite will affect Madden? I don't think it's going to affect it as much as people think it will. Remember, Frostbite is a new engine, but it's also going to be the first time they have to they get to use it. Like, they've been trying to implement it. Y you don't think it's going to change Madden overnight. It it's not going to... There's a bunch of Benoit's in this, in this draft. Um, yeah, that... Frostbite is not going to change Madden overnight. Didn't change FIFA overnight, and FIFA got it this year. Remember that? We're good with left tackle. I, I, I don't even... I, I, I'm scared to even look at these offensive linemen. Eh, not bad. Alright, so... We've looked at all the ends we want to look at. The defensive tackles haven't been a ton for us. So... Man, there's really no big time ends that I want to bring inside. 6'3", 302 maybe? But that pursuit, and then he ends up being a red? Eh. Eh! Let's get that last. Oh, that's right. We have a seven pointer we can put in it. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Graphically, I think it's going. We're going to see a big upgrade. But people are expecting this gameplay change that isn't going to come the first year. Not saying it's not going to happen, but if you're expecting a huge change out of Madden due to Frostbite, I just don't think you're going to see what you're hoping for. Yeah. Yeah, last year with the picks that I had, you're right. I, I I got a first from this year and traded back uh for a first from last year. Who got hurt? <clears throat> we can bring him back. He can come off the IR. Nate McAfee with a partial PCL tear. Thankfully it's partial and he's not out most of last or next season, so. Alright, all the practice squatters have been signed. We're good with that. Uh, one player's regressed based on age, I'm gonna guess. No, awareness for under four yards of carry. Ali, come on, my man. Yeah, nothing's gonna be lost in this. Nothing's gonna be lost, uh, by that. So, let's see the playoff schedule here. It looks like the Raiders at the Chiefs, the Falcons at the Seahawks, the Texans at the Steelers, the Vikings at the Packers. Wow, that's a big one right there. The Raiders and Chiefs, too. Um, let's see who the other two were. Let's see who the division or the uh, conference leaders were. We know one of them is the Jaguars. We know one of them is the Jaguars. Eagles and Jaguars. There you go, Philly fans. Jaguars, and it looks like the Bills got that extra spot. Um, and then the Eagles and the Saints on top of the NFC, boys. There's a good chance that would be Bortles' second MVP. Remember that. All right, let's look at these awards. The yearly awards. Blake Bortles is your MVP again. I think this is, this is his second one. Uh, Watts Wolford, one of the high draft picks for the Chiefs early on, leading them to a 10-6 record into the playoffs and second in the MVP voting. Robert Fine, we knew about him when he got drafted. Titarius Myrick. Wow, guys, a lot of these drafted quarterbacks doing well for themselves. Uh, Coach of the year, Gus Bradley has to be. That guy is sealed. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fire Gus Bradley ever at this point for them. All right, let's look at the AFC awards. Obviously, Bortles is Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year, Preston Brown. A uh, little CJ Mosley love in there. God, nice. Offensive Rookie of the Year with Jonathan McCord for the Dolphins with 3-13. and Christopher McAfee, get, they get two offensive rookies up there. Scott Toon, which was the quarterback, taken. Kevon Streeter. Defensive Rookie of the Year, DeMarco Levi. We're going to call him Levi because we have DeAndre Levy. 
Uh, Dijon Gatewood, Shaquille Teague. No one I really remember going after. <clears throat> uh, let's look at the NFC versions of these. Russell Wilson, Bridgewater, Elliott, Myrick. No one from us, obviously. Uh, Bobby Wagner, Aaron Donald, Aaron, uh, Eric Kendricks, Cameron Jordan, Anthony Barr. No Lions. I don't think that's a big surprise, guys. Uh, offensive Rookie of the Year, Denton Jeffries was a quarterback that was taken by the Bears. Rashawn Broyles, I think, is a running back. No, no, he's a uh, wide receiver. I apologize. Wow. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Colby Buenning of the 49ers. Donald Gant of the Lions. Let's go. Cannot hate on Donald Gant. Best quarterback was Bridgewater. Best running back was Myrick. Uh, best wide receiver was LeVon Wiggum. Armstead. Aaron Donald. Bobby Wagner. Come on, give me some love for Nate McAfee. Nolan McAfee, I'm sorry. I keep saying Nate McAfee. I've called him that for three years. Darius Slay was up there. Kicker. And back to the AFC real quick. Go backwards. Dustin Hopkins. Stephen Gilmore. Preston Brown, who was Defensive Player of the Year. Muhammad Wilkerson, Cordy Glenn, Allen Robinson up there, of course, with Franklin Wooten. Wooten has been a monster for them. Giovanni Bernard, Le'Veon Bell, no one from the Ra from the Lions, and no one from the Lions there. The Voyagers, love it. Bay Wagner, yes, Bay Wagner. 32nd in offensive yards, guys. That's not going to do us very well. I like Farmington Pryor, but it might be time to move Matt Stafford back in that spot. <laughs> we got Pryor some XP. We're moving on. Um, any news? I don't think we get any news until the Super Bowl, right before the Super Bowl for the draft stories. Yeah. I don't think we get anything until that. What's he doing again tonight, Evil? Uh, I'm the Lions, Owen. I'm the Lions. We're getting ready to move to Brooklyn, though. What's going on, Josh Galindo? All right, re-sign staff. We already have a head coach, uh, which I'm keeping. We're going to keep uh, Riverboat Ron. Clint Kelly and Madison Buecher. Um, It might be time to look for a new one. Matter of fact, I know it's time. It's time to look for new. I like the fact that he's a linebacker overall. We got no no use for him. With with Riverboat Ron being a level five, we need to go up. We need to go up. I think we're done with scouting, right? Yes, we're done with scouting. <clears throat> Brooklyn Beats Battlestar Galactica. Yes. That's why we picked the Beats. And because I'm an idiot. Uh, let's double check here. Let's see what the news is. All right, wild card game. It looks like KC ran rough shot over the Raiders. Seattle destroyed. Well, Seattle edged out the Falcons. Pittsburgh wins handily over the Texans, and Green Bay loses to the Packers. Green Bay loses to the Packers? The Vikings beat the Packers. Uh, the Vikings are the only road win. That's pretty impressive. So the divisional Steelers will go to Jacksonville, uh, where everybody loses. Everybody loses in Jacksonville. Uh, Vikings travel to Philly. Kansas City travels to the Bills. And the Seahawks travel to the Saints. We're not forcing any wins. Not happening. Your bust left tackle over the Browns and isn't letting a superstar quarterback get better? Doesn't surprise me, Evil. Doesn't surprise me. Am I getting real pumped for MLB The Show? Dude, come on. Have you not seen these World Series games? Of course I'm pumped for the show. Love the show. All right, we are going to hire some staff, but first, but first, let's see how that playoff schedule went here. Steelers lose to the Jaguars by a touchdown. Philly over the Vikings. Kansas City marches into Buffalo and sends them home. 
where New Orleans takes their frustrations out on the Seahawks. All right, let's hire some staff. We need to hire a scout, and we need to hire a trainer. Ooh, hello, Brian Gruden. Ah, but I don't like the running back overall. DB overall I could deal with. I could deal with a little DB overall. Love. <coughs> Matter of fact, you know what? I will pay extra for DB. Uh, DB, DB, if DB scouting is so tough. What's up, Easy Ethan? You can lurk all you want, my dude. Oh, hello, Clint. <laughs> He's got world-class regression protection. Uh, Buker's only got good. So we're going to hire Clint Daniel Morgan Oldenburg. No, one and only, I don't have a good, this is, this is like me struggling right now. This is struggle voice. The person that has the, the announcing voice is Scott Cole. That dude, I could listen to that dude call the dictionary. Six four, two hundred twenty-four 224 pounds of superstar development or us. Uh, oh, wait, wait a second. We hired Morgan. Acknowledge. Where's the rest of our staff though? Arios is good too. Arios definitely has a good one. No, no, I need to sign a scout. I guess I can't sign him yet. I just gotta wait. That does not make me feel good. The Rams have brought on John Harbaugh? Okay. Works for me. Let's see here. Let's see who won those uh, those title games. Oh, Jacksonville beats KC handily. And New Orleans. So we're getting Jacksonville and the Saints. Love it. Saints and Jaguars. Man, I better... That, that's... I better get that freaking higher staff. Oh, we, are we? Did we really not sign the guy? We had an. Oh, we had an offer rejected. I gotcha. So we need a scout, right? What? Ray Woodall, you rejected my decision, but. You sign with us? Hey? Withdraw the offer. They all saw oh, it's a bug. No, no, it's a bug. Look, they all say they sign with the Lions. I don't care what level they are. I'd really like another DB. Of course, there's no DB overalls. Damn it. Yeah, it's. A, I forgot about that bug. It always says that they uh, signed. Actually, there's a DB overall. What am I doing? 250. You need to sign with me. <laughs> yeah, no matter where they sign. Absolutely. That, that's a glitch. I forgot about that, guys. All right, we should have some stories, some draft stories, okay? All right, uh, let's see here. Tight end, Lawrence Kell. Poor day at the All-Star game. These are all, these all should be All-Star stories, uh, which don't have as much of an effect, but still there. Wide receiver Denard Hemingway. The most catches at the All-Star game. Uh, Lawrence Kell times two. Wow, it's never good to have a times two hurt at an All-Star game. 
Jabari Rogers, top DB available. Okay, okay. You don't have to tell me twice, Todd McShay. What's going on, Timmy? Thank you so much for stopping by, my dude. Timmy's one of those Scott Cole guys I was just talking about. Talking about Cole's voice. All right, let's see what Jabari Rogers has to offer me. He's not in there. Oh, there he is. Okay, so we were actually talking about possibly using that A-minus hit power guy. I just don't like that his zone coverage isn't on there. And he's 21, so that, that makes me feel a little better. I mean, it's like nothing in here. There's nothing in here, guys. B hit powers. And just that's that just doesn't do it for me. It doesn't do it. All right, all those we have. Like I said, I'd like to have as many of these of these first ratings as possible coming into the combine, so we know what we're working with, guys. What's up, Recon? Moving the linebacker. Yeah, Mullet, that, that might be the move is because we already have an established free safety, moving Jabari Rogers over to strong safety and using him as our cover two guy. That's that's exactly why I kind of want to look at him. Uh, you know what? I know I don't need him, but we are going to look at some of these offensive linemen just so we have them. Advanced week. Who will come out the winner of the Super Bowl? Man, I'll tell you what, the Jaguars are running this league. The big game. Alright, quickly, right now, before we let this back up. Before I let this back up, guys. Uh, this is the last opportunity to resign your players. Who wins... Who wins the uh, Super Bowl? In the chat, one for the Jags. Or actually, type out Jags or Saints. Jags or Saints, guys. Got a lot of Jags in the chat. A lot of Jags. Jags 34-13. Bortles for God status. Ricky Pro thinks the Saints. B Brewers got the Jags. All right, boys. I don't know if you're gonna. I don't know what you're gonna think about this. Let me, let me get to the screen here. Saints Yolo. Oh, I love that new logo though. I do love the new logo, guys. Your hate for the Saints won't allow you to say them. Oh, man. I got bad news for you. The New Orleans Saints take down the fabled Jaguars 35-28. You see, the Saints win it by running the football and not turning the ball over. Player statistics, passing. Uh, it looks like Brody Stafford, Matt Stafford's younger brother that came out of the draft. We saw him come out. Went 20 for 28, 233 yards with two touchdowns. Bortles throws two picks in the loss. Titarius Mack, one of the top young and up-and-coming uh, running backs, goes for 80 yards on 20 carries. Ivory fails the Jaguars along with Jeremy Hill. Amir Abdullah gets some yardage. Look at that. Amir Abdullah, who we traded away to the Saints. Love it. Receiving Julius Thomas. Let's see who. Let's see who will run this. Allen Robinson got his yardage. Jeremy Hill had an 81-yard screen pass for a touchdown. Jaleel Misi is the top for the Saints. And you see that. Uh, you see that safety blanket of Kobe Fleener out there. Deshaun Dykes with a touchdown. So yeah, big win, huge win for the Saints. Kenny Vaccaro with both picks, guys. Very nice. What's up, EHL? Alright. 